the second gift of the kindergarten, of Froebel's kindergarten, was like his trademark for some kind of business almost. The, the, the kindergarten, this was the symbol of kindergarten, and it was, it's interesting because it was, it was like Hegel for children. The thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. The cube is pure stability, the sphere is pure motion, and the cylinder is both, having flat sides and curved sides. It's interesting how they, the, uh, he, they use this with children. They would, spin the, they would spin these things on different axes, and if you spin the, the cube on a certain axis, you can actually see a cylinder inside. And if you spin a cylinder on a, on a certain axis, you can see a, a, uh, a sphere inside. So he was able to show little children this idea of continuity, of nothing stand, stands alone in the universe, the idea of sort of infinity of, of connections and unity. Unity was Froebel's most popular word in his writings. But it was, it was like a magic trick, really, for children to, uh, to show them this, this idea of um, one within the next. It's funny that it became so important in the kindergarten system that children would spin these objects. And of course, Froebel winds up being buried under his symbol. His tomb in Germany is, is the same. These are shapes from uh, neoclassicism, French architecture. Who is it? Boulet, Les Deux. They used these for gigantic buildings, at least drawings of gigantic buildings. It goes, well, of course, back to Plato and the idea of, of atomic structures and the universe being made out of simple geometric shapes. I mean, this is, this is a really old idea that he decided to use for to educate ch little children. It really became a design element, which is a sort of attractive, that you, you would use it as a toy, it would be some way to educate children. Well, certainly you can play with the gift too, so it would be considered a toy in that sense. I think play was at the heart of what Fuego was trying to do, although these are educational toys and they are um, tools for learning and understanding, so you could almost say that it's more like a science experiment or perhaps it's you know, a, a device for you know, determining geometric pattern in space. But most of the things that Froebel did were fairly playful, and I think that with the right teachers, they can turn this hanging apparatus into a sailboat, you know, or you know, something along those lines through storytelling. Children are going to play with whatever they have in their possession, so they may take the ball and roll it on a table back and forth between two people. You know, they'll take the cylinder and um, they'll stack. They will do things. So the children will play. They will find ways to play. But in terms of how it's generally intended for use, I think it's more of a science experiment. I liked the method of putting the stick through the and let the child do it by hand because they have much more control over it. A much smaller child is able to do that than to suspend it. There's a more complicated contraption using this hanging apparatus in the gift too. But normally they're suspended and I believe that they suspend all three of them in this gift too set so that you can quickly make a comparison um, and you know quickly detach them from the hook using the eyelet switch eyelets and put them back on and spin them using a stick. The uh, shapes will, um, when you spin them around, the string becomes twisted and then you can release that potential energy by forcing the loop open again and then it will, it will spin the opposite direction and twist up the opposite direction. So you can really, by going up and down with a stick, you can really get those um, solids to spin very rapidly. There are some optical illusions which, which convey a different perspective on what's happening. They show you some otherwise hidden information when they're in motion. Some of the pattern that's inherent in them comes through. So, for instance, if you spin the cylinder um, along a certain axis, you'll see that inherently it forms a spherical pattern and not a cylinder. If you take a cube and you hook into the center of one surface and you spin it, you'll see that inherently there is inside of it a cylindrical pattern which gives you an association so that ultimately what he wanted you to see was that the cube is derived from the cylinder which is derived from the sphere in terms of the pattern underlying it, the, 
There's a relationship there. All things are connected. The sphere is connected to the cube. Essentially, he wanted the children in presenting the information to know where the information came from so that they would be able to retrace their steps of their understanding.